Hello, I'm Steve Sowers, President, Commerce Bank Central Region. Commerce is proud to present the 2020 Mizzou Homecoming Hall of Fame. We've all had to make some adjustments this year and rethink how we do business. The Mizzou Alumni Association found a way to deliver this great event to you wherever you are. And here at Commerce, we continue to provide both the personal service and innovative products that individuals, businesses, and communities need to bank when, where, and how they want. So ultimately, we can all focus on the things that matter most. Commerce wants to say congratulations to these four deserving honorees. And to everyone watching at home, please enjoy the ceremony. Each year, the Mizzou Alumni Association is honored to recognize Tigers that have excelled in their chosen field. Mizzou's Hall of Fame inductees personify the values of the University of Missouri, respect, responsibility, discovery, and excellence. And this year's inductees are no exception. Among them, you will find trailblazers, entrepreneurs, and icons. What they share is a dedication to service and a deep love for their alma mater. Each of them has in their own way paved a path for Mizzou students to succeed today. Homecoming is a time for students and alumni to connect and to share their love of Mizzou across generations. Though we're apart, that connection and impact is as true today as it ever has been. It's my pleasure to introduce the tri-directors of our Homecoming Steering Committee who will introduce you to each of our inductees. And with that, it is now time to recognize our Mizzou Hall of Fame Class of 2020. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce our first inductee, Rich Kinder. Though he never got into politics himself, Rich has always been a leader. As a student, he was president of the law school student body, as well as chapter commander of his fraternity, Sigma Nu. At the core of his leadership is an understanding that history is essential in making thoughtful decisions today. With that in mind, he approaches alma mater with a bold idea, a joint center on campus, combining the strengths of Mizzou's political science and history scholarship. The Kinder Foundation's generous support led to the creation of the Kinder Institute on Constitutional Democracy, a global leader in the understanding of America's founding, relevance, and legacy on the world stage. Its nonpartisan, cross-discipline programming is some of the first of its kind, and its research is more relevant than ever, a testament to Rich's foresight. His work has helped cement Mizzou's reputation as a world-class destination for political thought. Let's learn more about this tiger. I believe my first uh, recollection of Rich Kinder was in uh, 1963. I suppose we just clicked pretty early on. The three of us, Rich, Bill, and myself, all started and completed our time at MU during the 1960s. Rich was active in uh, student government. Uh, he was president of the Sigma Nu House, and there was always talk around campus that had him predicted to be governor of Missouri. When we formed uh, Kinder Morgan in uh, 1997, we'd been friends and business associates for uh, over 30 years. Uh, initially, our idea was to buy a part of the energy infrastructure of this country, operate it efficiently, and have fun. We felt like we were both at the stages of our career that uh, fun should be a good part of what, our, what we were trying to do. They had faith in each other, uh, came together to create the largest pipeline system in North America. It went from 175 employees to, I think, over 11,000, and uh, about 200 miles of pipe to over 80,000 miles of pipe. It's a dramatic story. So I have known Rich and Bill for well over 40 years now. My friendship with, with Rich began instantly, uh, right upon the first meeting. A great sense of humor. Uh, uh, from the very first time ever, I've known he's insisted on excellence. I came to Houston in 2004 to become president of Rice University. And I had a real opportunity to meet some of the leaders in the city. And it was clear that Rich Kinder was one of those leaders. One of the things that has struck me about Rich is uh, he, he doesn't think he's got to do everything. And he, he, he succeeds in my experience by entrusting others. And I know he's so proud of the Institute up at the University of Missouri because he's constantly telling us about it here at Rice. 
Yeah, he really, he really is interested in the project, and I think the relationship that we've developed, not just me, but the rest of the faculty at the Kinder Institute, is one of a real mutual interest in the history and the foundations of American government and American politics. I think he really earns the respect of those of us in academia through that combination of curiosity and, and learning. So we'll send him scholarship and he reads it, he comments on it, he'll zoom in for some of the classes and lectures that we're doing. You know, it's, it's not every business person or frankly, even every academic who spends the time that Rich spends reading and learning about, about history. And I, I just think that creates quickly an atmosphere of mutual respect and collaboration. Rich and Nancy came with us for a week to Oxford, England with a group of about 20 students and they did everything with us. I remember one evening at dinner, we're in a 15th century dining hall. It looks like the set from Harry Potter and we're having dinner with students and Nancy kind of looks over and she tells me that Rich actually knows in order all of the kings of England, starting with Alfred the Great. And so we put him on the spot in front of the students and in front of everybody who was there, and he went through in order all of the kings of England. And so he had it just like that and, and from memory, but that's the, the kind of deep historical knowledge that he brings to the table. Rich does not enjoy being the center of attention. This is another example of your being uncomfortable with uh, this, this acclaim that all of us want to give you and, and which you so richly uh, deserve. It's actually pretty simple what has uh, made Rich successful. Uh, brilliance, thoughtfulness, integrity, and Nancy. I would say he's the best businessman that I've ever seen and uh, is absolutely a natural leader. There's a phrase that you'll hear Rich say if you hang out with him long enough, and it's that he's made more mistakes in his life by thinking too small than thinking too big. The value that, that Rich uh, and Nancy, the Kinder Foundation, have bestowed upon our community is almost immeasurable. For us, this has been uh, a wonderfully fruitful collaboration. It is just a privilege to work with Rich and Nancy. Uh, such a, a generosity of spirit. And I think what one really has to keep in mind is they wanna make things better. That is the number one thing to understand. They want to have an impact and they want to make things better for other people. And I think if you understand that, everything else can flow from it. On behalf of the University of Missouri, it is my honor to induct Rich Kinder into the Mizzou Hall of Fame. I'm not certain I deserve the honor, but I'm honored to be honored. and. Uh, uh, it's an institution that's meant a lot to me over the years, and uh, I've tried to stay in touch. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I'm just hopeful that uh, the example I've tried to set of giving back, that other alums uh, follow the same course of action. But it means a great deal to me. It's a, it's a great honor, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to accept it. It is my pleasure to also introduce our next inductee, Bill Morgan. Bill met his friend and fellow Tiger, Rich Kinder, during their college years at Mizzou. As co-founders of Kinder Morgan Incorporated, they oversaw its rapid growth into one of the largest energy infrastructure companies in North America. He and his wife, Sarah, are both proud alumni and have long supported the university. When their alma mater reached out with an innovative idea, Bill immediately committed to making it happen. The MU School of Law introduced the Veterans Clinic in 2014. With Bill's help, they've been able to expand their space, add an additional faculty member, and help veterans across rural Missouri navigate the complex and often overwhelming legal challenges in applying for and receiving the disability benefits they deserve. As a law school alum, Bill has a unique understanding of the generational good this clinic can do, not just for veterans, but for MU's law students who gain real-world knowledge of the impact that their service can have. Let's learn a little more about Bill Morgan. He's a very rare person. I met Bill Morgan at University of Missouri in the fall of 1964. Moved in with Bill in the fall of 65. He asked me to be a groomsman in their wedding in the next spring. So since that time, Sarah has always credited me with uh, civilizing Bill and uh, making him decent enough to marry her. Going in on 60 years now, 50 something years, he's about as close a friend as I have. Rich Bill and myself all started and completed our time at MU during the 1960s. It was a tumultuous decade. The overriding ongoing issue for most of us was the Vietnam War. 
and as the decade progressed, the war got wider and more deadly. At the end of our time in, in Colombia, we, we were all a subject to the draft. He understands the horrors of war as well as anybody else. He also knows what it's like to be a lawyer and a law student and what it's like to be able to have experiential learning. So having those things come together in Bill and for Bill to have the vision to see what we could do here has been a really remarkable thing. We now have the staff that we needed. We have the space that we needed. We have the infrastructure that we needed to be able to do these things for our nation's veterans. The Mizzou Veterans Clinic wouldn't be the Mizzou Veterans Clinic without Bill Morgan. We started on a shoestring, and we remained on a shoestring until Bill Morgan came along. Bill asked me to join the board of directors of Kinder Morgan at the, at the very early stages, uh, which I did. Several other people that I had known at Mizzou were involved with the company, so it was always a time when we were uh, renewing old friendships and, and remembering old relationships. We had a good team that we built. We had uh, complete openness among us. We knew each other so well, we could kind of read the other's thoughts. Uh, Bill is a, a really smart guy, a great businessman, and a great negotiator. Sometimes I'd put him in the room and I'd just leave because I knew if I stayed in, I'd screw it up, you know? So sometimes he would even say, look, Rich, if you'll just be silent or you'll leave the room, I can cut this deal on favorable terms. In business, Rich and Bill, turned out, of course, to be a great combination. The whole of their skills works together to provide a greater result than the sum of the parts. It was uh, more successful because the two of us were partners together. But in the meantime, uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. You know, the, the primary success is really Bill and, and, uh, and Rich's vision and their hard work and the standards they set for everybody else in the company. Midwest culture of honesty and hard work and family and respect for others was strengthened at Mizzou. Bill has also been an amazing steward of his father's scholarship. His father was a Supreme Court justice in Missouri. And um, in fact, some of those scholarship recipients have been students in our clinic. And it's sort of a nice circle of life that we see there. Judge Morgan died in 1998, which uh, allowed him to see the founding of Kinder Morgan. Bill was very proud of him, and he was very proud of Bill. On behalf of the University of Missouri, it is my honor to induct Bill Morgan into the Mizzou Hall of Fame. I think I can consider this honor a, a capstone to, to my career. And I appreciate the honor very much from the University of Missouri uh, and in accepting, in, a, in accepting this honor. Um, I also want to thank my wife. We've, uh, we've been married for 54 years. And uh, when Ken, Rich and I uh, 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 formed Kinder Morgan, Sarah and I were living in Kansas City. And uh, she was very involved in uh, charitable and, and uh, uh, political and cultural activities. We were very happy in Kansas City. And I knew that in making the acquisition uh, for it to work right, that we were gonna need to relocate to Houston. And uh, while she was uh, begrudging at first, um, eventually she did decide that uh, it, it, it made sense for us. And I really do wanna thank her for, for that. The other person I would like to thank is Al Atterbury. Um, I've actually known Al longer than uh, uh, anyone we've been talking about. He and I were uh, uh, sophomores in high school at, uh, in Chillicothe, Missouri, uh, a long time ago. And Al has been absolutely a lifelong friend over the years. Uh, uh, he's been a good sounding board for me. Uh, and uh, that relationship is, is, I would put right up there with my relationship with Rich Kinder in terms of, of uh, our friendship and uh, just someone who I enjoy being together with very much. Uh, well, the, the uh, best part of my experience at the University of Missouri is the people that I've, I've met. And uh, 
I am proud of the education that I received. I'm a firm believer that uh, in most top quality universities, um, if you want to get a good education, you can do it. And uh, I'm proud of, of Mizzou. Thank you. I'm Mason McClurg, a senior studying chemical engineering from Agency Missouri. It is my pleasure to introduce our next inductee, Cheryl Crow. Before the fame, the Grammys, or the record-breaking album sales, Cheryl Crow was the lead singer in Cashmere, a cover band that occasionally played at bars in downtown Columbia. It was a side gig for the education major, who found success as a music teacher before breaking into the global spotlight. That passion for teaching, music, and her Midwestern roots have brought her back to Mizzou multiple times, both as a proud alumna and as a champion for the arts. Her sold-out benefit concerts helped revitalize campus facilities for Mizzou's music students, and her ongoing support and love for all things Mizzou has been an inspiration. This self-described small-town girl might be world famous, but she is always called Missouri home. Let's learn more about this incredible tiger. She walked in the door and the first thing she did was stuck out her hand and said, hi, I'm Cheryl Crow. And I was like, whoa, a confident woman. I was teaching elementary music and Cheryl was finishing up her bachelor's degree in music education. I found her teaching to be enthusiastic and very energetic. She was eager to learn. Music education is fundamental to so many famous musicians. They will all kind of remember their piano teacher or their choir director. You see stories about this all the time. There's so many stories, really. We met freshman year and we were in the same pledge class. I just remember her as being just such a goofy, friendly, outgoing, just fun person. One of the famous things that our little group of friends has always laughed about Cheryl in college, I don't know if I should say this, but she had a very messy room. <laughs> I think I can say that because she's very neat and tidy now. She just was always trying to do like a gazillion different things at the same time. I think talented people are like that and everything about her is so creative. It was really great to welcome Cheryl back in 2015 for the benefit concert she did. She talked about her piano teacher here, so that was fun for us in the School of Music. And I think it was really fun for the students to be able to see her. I went on to teach music in St. Louis. I taught elementary music, but I did my student teaching here, and um, I have great memories of uh, Mizzou. She loves Mizzou, and I think is very sentimental about her time in Columbia. I am so proud of you and how hard you've worked to bring your music to life. You've made your career such a light in the world and I'm so proud to be your friend. You're just an amazing person. I am so proud of you, Cheryl Crow. <laughs> I love that you have continued to be a courageous woman, especially through your generous spirit. You're very, very deserving of this high honor that MU is bestowing upon you. Nicely done, Cheryl. A plus. <laughs> On behalf of the University of Missouri, it is my honor to induct Cheryl Crow into the Mizzou Hall of Fame. Everybody, I'm Cheryl Crow, and I can't tell you how touched I am to be inducted into the 2020 Mizzou Hall of Fame. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm so proud of my roots. I'm proud to be from Missouri, or Missouri, as we say, in Kennett, my hometown in the Boot Heel. But also, I'm so proud to be a graduate from Mizzou, and it is a nightly occurrence that I'm playing somewhere in the world, and someone will yell out, M-I-Z, and of course, I respond with Z-O-U. And um, first and foremost, I just want to say my memories of having been there 
um, are incredible. I was a summer orientation leader and I was a Tiger hostess and on so many committees. And I think all those experiences really helped me adjust to being, um, you know, a citizen of the world. And one of the great things about having been at Mizzou was that it really fostered this feeling of everyone helping each other and of having our eyes wide open, particularly to the journalism school. And so it's just, it's an incredible honor. And um, I'm still so proud and grateful to the friends that I still am very close to that I went to school with there 35 years ago. And um, that I get to listen to my father who graduated from Mizzou with a law degree, talk about his days there. Um, and I will continue to tell my kids about my days there. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very touched. So thank you so much for including me in this incredible legacy of those who've been inducted into the Mizzou Hall of Fame. I'm Rebecca Shu, a junior studying computer science from Columbia, Missouri. It is my pleasure to introduce our final inductee, Dr. Gus T. Rigel. Admitted to the university in 1950, Dr. Rigel faced extraordinary challenges. His admission signaled the beginning of the university's desegregation, and despite all odds, he managed to not only complete his graduate degree, but he did it with honors, and in only half the usual amount of time. His perseverance, resilience, and strength have made him a pioneering icon not just for Mizzou, but for higher education as a whole. After receiving his doctorate from the University of Wisconsin, Dr. Rigel would spend the rest of his life in service of higher education and was still serving as senior advisor to the president of Kentucky State University when he passed in early August 2020. The fellowship in his name has supported over 500 Mizzou students since its inception in 1987. In the seven decades since he first stepped onto campus, much has changed. But his life and work still inspire us as we continue to make Mizzou a more diverse, inclusive, and equitable home. Let's learn more about Dr. Rigel's life and incredible legacy. I knew of Gus Ridgel because he was a, you know, an icon of, of activism back in the day. For a guy to grow up in the boot heel of Missouri, valedictorian of his high school class, serve in World War II, finish Lincoln magna cum laude in three years, then be a part of l the litigation that opened the doors to Mizzou, that was the story. He was an inspiration for a lot of young African-American students. Many of the landmark cases in higher education integration or desegregation really have to do with the individuals who filed the litigation for access to a campus at the time when the nation was trying to rewrite its racial reality. But many of those people never finish. And when Dr. Ridgell came to Missouri, he started taking extra classes to finish and abate the hostility of this environment. But he was not going to leave without completing. The things that he experienced, not being able to find a place to eat downtown, being called the N-word, that happened regularly. I mean, he was one of nine. I was one of a couple of hundred when I came in 64. So the idea that this guy could do that uh, really helped me deal with the marginalization that, that we experienced. He was passionate about his community. He was passionate about making a difference. This was true of him and his wife. Both of them were heavily involved in the civil rights movement here in Kentucky and were involved in getting Martin Luther King to come to Kentucky and to actually march here. So that was a big deal. King was his fraternity brother, and my uncle was very, very active in Alpha Phi Alpha. They wanted to make sure that Kentucky was integrated. He was in a pivotal decision-making position. He was able to literally sit in judgment on a number of things that were going on in terms of racism and uh, discrimination. He was able to simply take a much higher perspective on it. He was always focused upon the academic excellence and the idea that we should all pursue it together. He had a great humanity, an ability to make people smile, 
and to help us make the best of even difficult situations. He just touched so many young scholars, encouraged them and motivated them and inspired them to be as successful as they could be. He's got a legacy and he is highly deserving of recognition in the, in the Hall of Fame. I miss you. I love you. Thank you for everything that you have uh, poured into my life and, and into the life of, of so many. And I look forward to seeing you again. On behalf of the University of Missouri, it is my honor to induct Dr. Gus T. Rigel into the Mizzou Hall of Fame. Speak their names. Harold Franklin, Auburn. Theodis Robinson, Tennessee. Authorine Lucy, Alabama. Lyman Johnson, Kentucky. James Meredith, Mississippi. George Stark, Florida. Charlene Hunter, Georgia. Hamilton Holmes, Georgia. A.B. Trudeau, Jr., LSU. Silas Hunt, Arkansas. Speak their names. All of them share a common history of being the first African-American to be admitted to their state universities. Some were received peacefully, albeit reluctantly. Others, like James Meredith and Arthurine Lucy, were met with anger, unrest, civil disobedience, personal danger, riots, governors in doorways to deny admission, the National Guard, the FBI, isolation. All of them deserve the gratitude of our nation for their willingness to be the first. Their incredible courage and fortitude has led to today's diverse and inclusive student bodies on behalf of all of us who stand on their shoulders, I say thank you. My father was one of the first. His admission was peaceful. The University of Missouri went about its business and in doing so allowed him to go about his. His goal was to complete a master's in economics in one year, a goal motivated by a lack of funds for a second year. My father was a funny man. He enjoyed telling and hearing long-winded stories. He was a mentor to many of his Kentucky State students long after their graduation. He appreciated and often acknowledged his own mentors, Cy Perlman from the University of Wisconsin, Ambassador Sam Westerfield from Lincoln University, and his beloved Lionel Newsom. He was an educator, a lifelong advocate for civil rights and an act active member of his academic and civic communities. He was proud that like the aforementioned universities, the University of Missouri recognized and honored his accomplishments and his place in Missouri history. The Gus T. Regal Fellows Program had a special place in his heart. On behalf of my father, his family, friends, colleagues, and hundreds of former students, I accept his induction into the University of Missouri Alumni Association Hall of Fame. He is smiling with a chocolate chip cookie and a bowl of bluebell ice cream in front of him. Thank you. Thank you again to our homecoming steering committee and a special thank you to the presenting sponsor of today's event, Commerce Bank. We are incredibly grateful to our newest Hall of Fame inductees. In so many ways, they are pioneers. The work has transformed Mizzou, and our community feels that impact every day. Thank you for helping us celebrate these Mizzou icons. M-I-Z.